We want to welcome you to evening worship. And I know you have a, a busy day today, but um, what a best way to close the day with a good meditation upon the Word of God. Tonight's message is based on the book of Lift Him Up, page 257, entitled, A Crucified and Risen Savior. A Crucified and Risen Savior, this is basically the center of the whole Bible. Jesus says, search the scripture for you in them find, they, they all testified of me. So, the Christian church was found upon a great disappointment. And that disappointment was the crucifixion. And it's interesting that similar to the foundation of the Advent movement, it was founded upon a great disappointment with the only difference was that the Christian church was found, the disappointment came first. So the sweetest part came after which was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So that the, the crucifixion was like a disappointment, but then after the third day, Jesus was risen. And as a proof of that, we have read about the testimony of the disciples on the way to Emmaus. These disciples, they were so sad, and in the book of Luke, when that stranger came and joined them in their conversation. He told them what manner of communication are this that ye have one to another. He said, as ye walk and are sad, so he could tell their countenance they were sad. And then they explained the reason why their sadness. And they told Jesus, which was the stranger, he said, but we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. So apparently the crucifixion was a disappointment. And it was the fulfillment of that scripture that said, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. So they thought that Jesus was the redeemer of Israel. But with the crucifixion, they got disappointed. <clears throat> but what was the reason for the crucifixion? Why did he die on Calvary? In John chapter 12 and verses, verse 32 and 33, John chapter 12, verses 32 and 33, it tells us the reason why Jesus was crucified. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, would draw all men unto me. So this was the reason for the crucifixion, that Jesus can be lifted. The same uh, answer that Jesus gave to Nicodemus, he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, it is necessary that the Son of Man be lifted up the same way. So, but what is the purpose? He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. So the purpose of the crucifixion was to attract people to Christ. And in the book that I may know him, page 35, he said, when we look with the eyes of faith upon the cross of Calvary and see our sins laid upon the victim hanging in weakness and ignominy there, when we grasp the fact that this is God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, we are led to exclaim, Say, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. So when we look at the cross, he said, we are led to exclaim, behold what manner of love. Like John also said, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
And Jesus died for his church. Like he says in Ephesians chapter 5, he said, and he gave himself for the church. <clears throat> in the book, Lift Him Up, page 257, he said, it, it was in order that the heavenly universe might see the condition the, of the covenant of redemption that Christ bore the penalty in behalf of the human race. So it was to expose to the universe that Jesus came to fulfill the covenant of redemption. He said the throne of justice must be eternally and forever made secure through that great sacrifice, through the sacrifice of our Lord Redeemer, Jesus Christ. By the sacrifice Christ was about to make, all doubts would be forever settled and the human race would be saved if they would return to their allegiance. So that sacrifice is the hope of every one of us, the hope of humanity. Christ alone could restore honor to God's government. The cross of Calvary would be looked upon by the unfallen worlds, by the heavenly universe, by satanic agencies, by the fallen race, and every mouth would be stopped. So notice carefully here, the sacrifice of Jesus will be exposed to the whole universe, not just to heavenly angels. He said even to satanic agencies, all the worlds, all the created beings throughout the universe, they saw that great sacrifice. And what was the reason? Well, what was the purpose? He said that every mouth would be stopped. So in, in making his infinite sacrifice, Christ would exalt and honor the law. He would make known the exalted character of God's government, which could not in any way be changed to meet men in his sinful condition. So this is some of the things of what the sacrifice of Christ means to us. <coughs> Because Jesus was chosen as the word redeemer. When the question was asked, whom shall I send and who will go from us? Jesus answered, here am I, send me. So Jesus became the main substitute. And in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 45, Galatians 4.45, he said, But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent for his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that are under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So the sacrifice of Christ made possible that you and I may receive the adoption of sons. So no wonder why. The spirit of prophecy said that when we really look upon the cross, when we look upon the sacrifice of Jesus, say we are moved to exclaim, say, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. So we should pray for spiritual understanding, for divine illumination that we may fully have an, a, an understanding of the great sacrifice of Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Apostle Paul summarized the whole thing, saying, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he said, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So this, this verse is very difficult to understand. It said, Jesus knew no sin, he said, but, he said, God made him to be sin for us. He made him to be that. For what purpose? He said that he might be made the righteousness of God in him. What a beautiful um, statement here from the Bible. Now, that sacrifice was ordained before the foundation of the world. 
Jesus was identified as the land slain from the very foundation of the world. <coughs> and Jesus emphasized many times that all these things needed to take place in order to what? In order to accomplish what the scripture said, what the prophecy was pointing out. In Luke 22, verse 37, Luke 22, 37, he said, for I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressor for the things concerning we have an end. So all these things were written about Christ. And it was written as a witness to the whole universe. In the next paragraph of the same book, lift them up, page 257. So who is able to describe the last scene of Christ's life on earth? His trial in the judgment hall, his crucifixion? Who witnessed these scenes? The heavenly universe, God the Father, Satan and his angel, and And all the created beings, they were able to witness this uh, sacrifice of Jesus. Now, Jesus made this because of he loved you and I, because of love. He said in Romans 5, 8, he said, but God commanded his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So this is the, the, the best proof that we can have that God loved us so much. The cross, the crucifixion, is the hope of us all. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So these are some of the benefits or some of the blessings that we receive through the sacrifice of Jesus. In John 3, 15, he said that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the, the blessing that we receive through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The death penalty that was pronounced upon men, it was revoked. Man was set free. He said, therefore, as by the offense of one man, judgment came upon all men in condemnation, the same way, he said, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justific justification of life. So that's what Jesus has done. And not only that, but he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So he came to reconcile humanity with the Father, and he also gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So this is a very important uh, ministry that has been given to us here in this earth to bring men to a complete restoration in, in Christ Jesus. <laughs> now, um, in the next paragraph, he said, the terrible sins of the crucifixion reveal what humanity will do when under Satan's control. So when man is under control of Satan, we cannot even control what we can do. He said, they reveal what the uh, outcome would be in s if Satan was to control the world. Those who witnessed these scenes never lost the impression made upon their minds. Many were converted and told others of the awful scenes they beheld. So notice carefully, just by looking at the crucifixion, he said many were converted by looking. And that was the fulfillment of the statement made by Jesus when he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. So what is it that we need to do then? To look upon Jesus. 
Now, the, the sacrifice of Christ was also given to prophet Ezekiel in a parable. And this parable described what is it what that he will, will do in order to save men. In Ezekiel 17, book of Ezekiel, chapter 17, verses 22 and 23, this is the parable here. It says, Ezekiel 17, 22, it says, Thus says the Lord God, I will also take of the highest branch of the high cedar and will set it and will crop off from the top of this young twigs a tender one and will plant it upon a high mountain and eminent. In the mountain of the high of Israel will I plant it and it shall bring forth buds and bear fruit and be of goodly cedar and under, under it shall dwell all fowls of every wing in the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. So notice how it is presented here. So like it will plant and it will bear fruit. It will bear fruit. And so Christ is the branch, hmm. the highest branch and the highest cedar. He was the plant of the Lord's setting. <clears throat> I mentioned at the beginning that uh, the church of Christ was found upon the great disappointment of the crucifixion. But what happened when Jesus was resurrected? What happened when he was risen? The good news that he is alive. Huh? They forgot that Jesus has said before, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So Jesus is the resurrection. And this message of that Christ is alive is echoed throughout the old New Testament. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, Revelation 1, 18, Jesus said, talking about himself, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. So Jesus is alive. That's a good news. Remember when the... The disciples went to the sepulcher, and they did not find the body there. So um, there was a person that uh, talked to them, and he said unto them, Be not afraid. Say, Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Now, notice carefully here. He said, be not afraid. Say, he is risen. And I know you seek Jesus. It is the same with us, brethren. If we seek Jesus, we should not be afraid. We should not be afraid of anything. And then he said, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is risen. So that was the good news. That gave the Christian church the sweetest part of the Christian. And we are so thankful to God because we have such a Savior. We have a living Savior which is interceding in our behalf in the heavenly courts. <clears throat> And how important, or what, how important is the, the resurrection of Christ? How important it is for you and for me? In 1 Corinthians 15, uh, page, uh, verse 14, 1 Corinthians 15, it said, If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So if Christ is not risen, there is no reason for you and I to go out and preach. 
because it was necessary that Jesus would die. But uh, the hope of Christianity is found in his resurrection because he is not, he had the keys of death and he overcame death on your behalf. Now, according to the parable that we, we read in Ezekiel, he said that he will, pl he, will be, he will be planted and bear fruit. How can we apply the same principle of the resurrection, of the crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ to our own experience? How can we apply that to us? The book of Romans, chapter 6, the Apostle Paul summarized basically that that experience of the crucifixion and the resurrection must be the experience of you and I. This is why Jesus told his disciples, if any man will go after me, what is he supposed to do? Take up your cross and follow me. But how do we do that? That's the question. And I want to uh, conclude with this explanation given by Apostle Paul here. Romans chapter 6, beginning to read from verse 3. Romans 6, from verse 3, notice carefully here. It says, Now you know that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up, from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Now, when we talk about the crucifixion and the resurrection, what is it that we're talking about here? What is it that everything that Jesus did, he also invited us to follow in the same example, to follow on his steps. Notice that in verse uh, 5, he mentioned here like a, a question mark. He said for a conditional way, he said for if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death. So notice this is, this is conditional here. Because uh, everybody is supposed to be born again. That's what we've been called for, to be born again. But how is it that that, that take place? He said if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, if we really have died, he said, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So the new man, he said, the old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin anymore. What a wonderful experience here. The crucifixion of Christ is not just a theory. His resurrection is not a theory. It's a beautiful symbol that we must experience in our lives. And especially as, as preachers, as, as ministers and Bible workers, unless we go through that experience, you know, our work may be in vain. So it is my wish and prayer that we will, we all say like the Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. It is my prayer that that may be the statement that every one of us may say, not just tonight, but every day of our lives. Like Paul said, I die daily. So may God help us and bless us this evening as we contemplate the Savior being crucified. Amen.